Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I would like to show you how to easily set up objects so that they rotate continually in a circle. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Okay, what you see here is a robot that I made in a previous tutorial. I'll put a link up here so that you can get to that. Uh, and what, when you first come into Blender, you come inside of what's called object mode. Normally when you edit objects or basically make up the detailed parts of objects, you go into edit mode. For this tutorial, we're gonna stay in object mode though. Okay, if you're brand new to Blender and you wanna know how to navigate your view to get around, if you click on this navigation tab, you have these different buttons right here where you can just click the buttons and uh, you know your view will quickly change around. To see this navigation tab, which is very useful, you have to go to File, User Preferences, go to Add-ons, and there's just this first uh, add-on right here, 3D View, colon, 3D Navigation. Just make sure you have a check mark right there. Okay, my purpose for doing this tutorial is, is typically when you show off 3D work that you've done, uh, such as like when I modeled this robot right here, typically what you'll do is you'll have your, you know, object character rotate, you know, somewhat slowly so that you can easily uh, view the, the character or object from multiple sides. And I just wanted to show you a very easy way I learned not too long ago how to, uh, you know, set up to have the object rotate and to rotate continually. So it's, you know, easy to set up for uh, demo reels or you just, you know, even if you're going somewhere where you're going to personally display your work, you can just have your, uh, your 3D work just rotating. So let me show you that now. Okay, currently we are in the default workspace for Blender and you can see right here it says default. What we're going to do is click here and then we're going to select animation. Okay, what you see here now with the animation uh, workspace is right here. This is what's called a dope sheet. And this just makes it very easy to manipulate animations. This right here is your curve editor. And again, it just makes things easier as far as working with animations inside of Blender. Okay, what you see here is the robot that I modeled as well as two empties. What empties are is empties are non-renderable objects. Empties are very useful, uh, particularly for using them as handles. This robot is actually made up of multiple pieces. So if I wanted to grab the robot and move the robot or rotate the, the robot, it could be difficult because it was multiple pieces. So what I did was I selected all of the individual pieces of the robot, then I... Uh, or actually I brought in an empty, then I selected the individual pieces of the robot, and then I, with those pieces, selected a held shift, then I selected the empty, then I hit control P. And what that did was that parented the different pieces of this robot to the empty. So then when I grabbed the empty, I could just, you know, move the empty around and all of the pieces would follow. Okay, and then when, with those pieces of the robot, selected or parented I should say to this empty I then took this empty and parented it to this empty right here so long story short this empty right here when I select this and I press G I can move you know the other empty around as well as the robot around uh, and again it's useful because that robot is actually individual pieces however by me grabbing the empty it's like I'm grabbing you know one piece Yes, using empties to have the multiple pieces of this robot seem like one object is useful. It's also sometimes if you don't want to uh, have a group, another way that you can make kind of like a group of objects and just grab them all at once is you can have those objects parent it to an empty and just, you know, move the empty and then all of the individual objects will, you know, move like they're one object since you're you know, uh, uh, grabbing the empty and moving the empty around. To do what we're about to do here, you don't need to have two empties. You only need to have one empty. 
uh, having more than one empty gives you more options as far as animating objects uh, sometimes. I just want you to be aware that it's not necessary for you to have two empties. And again, you have this robot here is parented to this empty, and then this empty is parented to this empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this empty rotate, and then all of the other objects that are parented to this empty will rotate along with it. Okay, to set up the uh, rotation animation, you're just going to make sure you have your empty that your objects are parented to. You're then going to press I, and then uh, that I press brings up your insert keyframe menu. And then from here, you're just going to choose rotation. Okay, if you look here, you can see this is the actual keyframe for the um, rotation that we you know, just hit I, insert, key, rotation, keyframe four. If we click this arrow right here, we can see here's different accesses uh, for the rotation. We're only going to be using the Z uh, access for this current animation. So what we're going to do is click here. I'm just left clicking here. Then I'm going to press X to delete, uh, you know, that access of rotation. I'm going to click here, then press X to delete that access of rotation. So only one we have left is the uh, Z Zuler. <laughs> I'm not sure I did pronounce it. Uh, rotation uh, access, and that's what we want. Okay, so what we want to do now is turn our attention to this area here, which this is the uh, curve editor. I'm going to hover my mouse here and just drag this up so we have a little bit more area to work in here. I'm going to make sure that I select on rotation. I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to make sure I click and select right here. Okay, so with that selected, now what I'm going to do is press the N key to bring up our properties panel. Okay, one thing I want to make mention of is the fact that when I press the N key, my uh, mouse was hovering over this general area right here. In Blender, it's important where your mouse is at as far as how your shortcut keys work. Uh, okay, so with that being said, what you want to do now is scroll down to where you see uh, this area that says modifiers. You want to click right here where it says add modifier. And now this add F curve modifier pops up. So now what you want to do is choose where it says generator right here. Okay, now with that modifier on, when we go here to click to play the animation, you can see that our mesh model is rotating uh, continually. However, it's rotating far too quickly for the purposes that uh, I generally want when I set up a rotation, which is normally to show off, you know, the 3D work that I did. Okay, how we can deal with slowing down the animation is we'll just scroll down here. And you see where it says Y equals, you want to look right here where it says 1.000. We can just click here and I'm going to put in point zero two and then left click here to get that to lock in. Okay, now when we go to play the animation, you can see that just rolling the mouse wheel to zoom in that now the the mesh is moving at a fairly decent speed. It's, you know, decent speed to show off what you've done. However, at the same time, it's moving slow enough so you can actually see the mesh. Okay, one th more thing that I would like to uh, show you guys is that as you watch this rotate, basically what's going on is, uh, see that timeline indicator? It's going to 250 frames. 250 frames is the standard amount of frames that you start off when you animate things inside of Blender. Uh, when this timeline indicator gets to 250, basically it starts over, right? Typically, when you're going to be showing off uh, a mesh, you want to have the mesh look like it continually rotates. And if you look at the mesh here and watch when this gets to 250, this being the timeline indicator, you can see that jump right there. Usually when you're showing off uh, a 3D mesh, you want it to go continuously like the, the uh, animation just loops. So to set that up, what you can do is with your mouse hovering here, you can press the N key, right? 
See this property right here? You can see that this rotation property, this uh, Z axis is the one moving. So I'm gonna pause here, right? I'm gonna click here. This takes us back to the beginning of the timeline. And you can see that is, this is, you know, 1.146. Uh, Don't concern yourself with this 0.146. Just look at this and see this as one, right? So what we want is this mesh to rotate continually uh, for 360 degrees, right? So basically what we're going to do is right click and drag, right? I'm going to hold the middle mouse here and drag this timeline to the side to give us some more space. Then I'm going to right click and drag some more. So this is the end of our timeline. I'm going past that. What I'm doing is I'm looking at this number and I'm going to take it up to 360. When you get close, you can actually, uh, use this right here and just click so now you can see this says you know 360 again don't concern yourself with uh the numbers after a dot so what we want to do is with this timeline indicator here which it stopped you know pretty much with this being 360 degrees we're going to hover our mouse here and then press the e key to have our uh timeline indicator come right up to this 300 and you know uh 15 frame okay typically when you want to have something uh have a looping animation what you want is is you want to take one frame off the last frame so that the what would be the last frame is actually the first frame so what we're going to do is click here and have this go to 314 so now when we click play what should happen is we should have a pretty much a perfect loop okay so we're getting close there and there we go so I'm just gonna press in to take away that properties panel okay guys that's it for the tutorial uh, hopefully this tutorial will help you out for those of you setting up portfolio and demo reels uh, for all of those of you out there who liked the videos on this channel, we share them. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.